Thank you, Christina. Welcome to all of you here to our Ash Wednesday service. We've got a great crowd of folks came out in the storm. Thank you all for being here and being a part of our Ash Wednesday service. I want to thank those of you at home watching us. I'm sorry the storm kept you away, but I'm glad we got this Facebook and the broadcast. So you're a part of this as well. So thank you all, those at home and those that are here, as we come together on this very holy night, this night that we call Ash Wednesday. What we're going to be looking at is basically an emphasis of a dual encounter. On this night, we will encounter and confront our own mortality, our own life, and confess our sin before God within the community of faith. And within this, looking at this dual theme of sins and death and life, of God's redeeming love for each and every one of us through Jesus Christ. So what we come to tonight is now a time of self-examination, a time to remember, and a time to confess. And so as we come together here on Ash Wednesday, I invite those who are here with me to take your bulletin at this time and to join me in the responsive greeting. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Bless the Lord who, give, who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. I invite you now to please join me for our opening prayer. O oh God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made, from the dust of the earth you have formed us, and from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, creating us clean hearts, and put within us a new spirit, that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Our opening hymn is actually in our bulletin. You know, we don't have the screen tonight. But we're going to be singing Beneath the Cross of Jesus. It's 297 there in your hymnal. I know you at home don't have it. Some of you may know this song. If not, I invite you just to listen, to be in prayer, and listen to the beautiful message of this. So let us sing. If you would stand now and join me. 
for our opening hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. Number 297, we'll sing the first and third verses. Stand up.
of you at this time. First off, from our Old Testament reading. It comes to us from the prophet Joel in the Old Testament. And I'd like to share with you from Joel's words from God himself. Joel chapter 2, verses 12 through 16. And what we have here is usually entitled, A Call to Repentance. That is why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. Who knows? Perhaps he will give you a reprieve, sending you a blessing instead of this curse. Perhaps you will be able to offer grain and wine to the Lord your God as before. Blow the ram's horn in Jerusalem. Announce a time of fasting. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. Gather all the people, the elders, the children, and even the babies. Call the bridegroom from his quarters. And the bride from her private room. Our next hymn is found on page 382. Have thine own way, Lord. Great old hymn. I know a lot of you at home will know this one as well. And I invite you to join me once again, number 382, in your hymnal. Have thine own way, Lord. And we'll sing the first, second, and fourth stanzas.
And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. No longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. And all the God's people together said, Amen. 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 God bless you and thank you. Please be seated. I shared this story, or I should say I received this story. I shared it before, but I received it from somebody I had only met once. But he wrote this down, and he wanted me to have it. And told me to share it with others, any chance I could get. And so this is his story that I want to share with you at this time. It's called Quilt of Hope. As I faced my maker at the last judgment, I knelt before the Lord along with all the other souls. Before each of us laid our lives like the squares of a quilt in many piles. Now an angel sat before each of us, sewing our quilt squares together into a tapestry that is our, representing our life. But as my angel took each piece of cloth off the pile, I noticed something. I noticed how ragged and empty each of my squares were. They were filled with giant holes. Each square was labeled with a part of my life that had been difficult. The challenges, the temptations I was faced with in everyday life. I saw hardships that I endured which were the largest holes of all. I glanced around me. Nobody else had such squares. Other than a tiny hole here and there, the other tapestries, they were filled with rich color and bright hues of worldly fortune. I gazed upon my own life and I became disheartened. My angel was sewing very hard sewing the ragged pieces of cloth together, threadbare and empty. It appeared as if he was binding air. Finally, though, the time came when each light was to be displayed, held up to the light, the light, the scrutiny of truth. The other people there, they rose with their angels, each in turn holding up in their tapestry. And so filled their lives had been. Beautiful pieces of work. It was in my time. My angel nodded to me and I stood, rose to my feet. My gaze dropped to the ground in shame. I had had all the earthly fortunes. I had love in my life and I had laughter. But there were also times of trial and of times of wealth and false accusations that took me from my, that took from me my world as I knew it. I had to start over many times. I often struggled with the temptation to quit, only to somehow muster the strength to pick up and start all over again. I spent many nights on my knees in prayer. <clears throat> Asking for help and guidance in my life, I had often been held, been held up to ridicule, which I endured painfully each time, offering up to the Father in hopes that I would not melt within my skin. 
beneath the judgmental gaze of those who unfairly judged me. And now I had to face the truth. My life was what it was. And I had to accept it for what it was. So I rose and I slowly lifted the combined squares of my life, my tapestry, to the light. As I did, suddenly an all-filled all gas filled the air. I gazed around at the others. They were all staring at me with eyes wide open. Then I looked upon the tapestry of my life that was now before me. Light flooded the many holes. And as it did, it created an image. It created the face of Christ in my life's tapestry. It was then that Jesus, that Jesus stepped forward and stood there in front of me. He had warmth and love in his eyes. He looked at me and he said, Every time you gave over your life to me, it became my life, my, my hardships, your struggles, my struggles. At each point of life in your life is when you stepped aside and you let me shine through. And you did that until there was more of me than there was of you. As I shared with you, tonight we celebrate Ash Wednesday. Now, for most of us, we know this, that Ash Wednesday is the beginning point for the season of Lent. It's actually kicked off by Fat Tuesday that was celebrated yesterday, but it is the beginning point for the season. And it's a season in which we are now called to make the journey. To make our journey to the cross, but not to make it by ourselves. We are called to make the journey alongside Jesus as he makes his way to that cross. Now to begin this journey, Ash Wednesday calls for us to confront our humanness. We have to stop and we need to take a look at our human ways, our human ways of doing things, looking at our mortality, the fact that we're not going to live forever. We confront our humanness, we confront our mortality by holding up our lives. We may not have a tapestry. And so we are called down to hold up our lives before a spiritual mirror. And looking at that mirror, you and I now are called to take a good look at ourselves. But most importantly, tonight is the night we begin the journey by taking a good look at the life that we are living right here, right now. So it's about holding your life up and letting the light of God's redeeming love shine upon you so that you can see yourself for who you really are. And who are we? We are sinners in need of forgiveness. And through all this, by recognizing who we are, through all this, we can allow God to change us, to change each and every one of us, to change your life so that others can see Christ now living and shining completely in you. Letting them see someone who stepped aside and let Jesus did that in their lives in which they gave their life, their sins, in such a way as what happens in the story. There's more Jesus than the man. And that's what Ash Wednesday is about, asking ourselves this question. What do I need to begin to do now? What changes, what sins? What hurt feelings, what jealousy, what unforgiveness, whatever it is, what do you and I now need to step aside and give to Jesus so that there will be more of Jesus in us and more of you and me? 
And we begin all this tonight. We begin our journey now by confessing our sins here within this community of faith. And as we begin this journey tonight, I simply want to share this one last thought with you from the author of that story, where he concludes by writing this. May all our quilts be threadbare and worn, allowing Christ to shine through. Allowing Christ to shine through. Amen. I'd like to share with you now at this time this invitation. An invitation to the observance of Lenten discipleship. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to observe a holy Lent. To observe a holy Lent by self-examination, taking a look at your life, holding it up to that mirror. To observe a holy Lent by repentance giving your sins and asking God to forgive you, to observe a holy Lent by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. But on this night, now to make a right beginning of repentance and a mark of our moral nature, let us now bow our heads before our Creator, and our Redeemer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our, of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. And this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and all the God's people together said, Amen. Amen. It is at this time first, as we do with communion, I want to first turn to our camera. And I'd like to invite those of you who are at home. I sent a message out. I wasn't sure what the weather was going to be, so I decided, why not try it this way? So I hope you were able to get some ashes at your home this afternoon. And if you are there by yourself, well, you're not alone. The Holy Spirit, Christ, is with you as well. And you're with us now. But if you're by yourself, then join me. Or if you're with somebody, share together now. And I invite you, if you will, to take your ashes, place a little moisture into them, and then to place them upon your thumb, and to join with me. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Repent and believe the gospel. It is at this time now for you at home, I'm going to ask you to go into a time of prayer and confess your sins to God. What I have done here tonight for those that are with me, we gave everybody a blank piece of paper. And I asked them to be thinking about this during the service. What is something that you need to give to God? Is there some unforgiveness in your life for somebody? Do you here tonight, maybe there's some jealousy in your life. 
Maybe there's somebody that's been blessed by something in their life, and your first reaction was, why them? They don't deserve it. I do. Which is just the opposite of what Jesus will say. Jesus will say, thank God for their blessing. Or once again, maybe like me tonight, I had to drive down Getwell, and there was a part of the road that was being blocked off. And for a split second, I almost didn't let that car over. <laughs> I started, but then I realized that's not what Jesus would want me to do, so I backed up. But I confess that that was my first thought. That was my sin. My first thought was, he saw the signs I did. I got over him plenty of time. Why does he get to get over at the last minute? And I confess that sin tonight. But I thank God that he also gave me enough sense to slow down and say, this is what Jesus would want me to do. So is there something like that even in your life right now? Because we're beginning a journey. And let's begin that journey on the right step forward. So I've invited those that are here to write anything on a piece of paper. And I've asked them to fold it twice. And I have this box here in front of me. And they're going to be invited to come when they're ready to come and drop their thing, whatever it is, their sins, their unforgiveness, their hard heartedness or whatever, to drop it in. And they're going to receive the blessing of the cross. What I want you to home to do is just take time now, bow your head, and ask for that same forgiveness. Confess it now. Talk to God about it. And be in prayer for us. Who will be now coming forward. I'm first going to ask Christina to come forward. Christina, forgive me. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Repent and believe the gospel. Now, she'll be playing. As you come, if you do have hair, I invite you to pull back. I don't want to get it messed up. But you are now invited. Those of you who are here to bring your paper, drop it in the box, receive it. If you want to stop it at the altar and pray, you're more than welcome to do so. But you are now invited to come and receive the marking of the ashes.
I invite those of you who are here with me to take your bullets and once again turn to the second page. I invite you to join me now for our closing responsive reading. And I invite you to at home just to pray along with us in your hearts as we pray this together. We are standing once more at the beginning of a holy journey. It is a journey we have been praying to make, and a journey we need to make. Help us, O oh God, to be attentive to it, marking the sins we carry with us and the temptations that line the way. Lead us, O oh God, to endure deeper and truer commitment to you, and to the values and understanding given to us by your Lord Jesus Christ. Enable us to reflect on the way we have lived and the way we ought to be living. Guide us once more to the life-changing decisions that await us, and give us the desire and the courage to make them. Help us to make this a real season of prayer, and seek your heavenly assistance in overcoming the unwillingness that could prevent this from being a time of renewal and discovery in our lives. Send your Holy Spirit upon us. Through Christ, who opened up the way and is able to lead us as no earthly leader is able to do. Amen. We're going to close now with the great hymn, Just As I Am, Without One Plea. And we're going to sing just the first two verses. Just As I Am, Without One Plea. This will be the closing of our service. And I want to invite those of you who are here, would you now please stand? For our closing hymn, and I'm sure you at home, most of you know this. Please join us at this time. Just as Goodbye. You're invited to come and join me now.